Hello, this is Dave Allen. I'm the Geeky, and I like to have things encrypted in my emails. And here is a nice solution, which I'm quite pleased to be able to find and be able to recommend. It's a good way of using PGP or GPG to get your emails encrypted. Now, create a Vivaldi account using... Well, it doesn't have to be in the Vivaldi browser. It can also be in any browser because it's a web-based service and it means that you can use it on your iPad and your iPhone as well. So anyway, create yourself a Vivaldi account just by following these details here. Put the username. This age thing here is just so that they know that you're over 16. Put your passwords in there. Don't forget to use 1Password or similar password management tool to be able to uh, look after your passwords. The recovery email is just an email they send the details uh, for like any sort of uh, management of the account to. And that's why you need to put another email address in there. Then this is a security question. You don't have to receive the Vivaldi newsletter, but, well, there's things happening, so you might want to do that. And then, obviously, you have to read it and agree to the terms of conditions and register. And that's basically all you need to do. The only thing is, is that you do need to be able to uh, confirm yourself with a phone number. So um, I'll be able to have one account on this here because I've just got one, one phone number. And um, if you want more, then you need more phone numbers. But it's still a pretty good system anyway, and I quite like it. So I already have an account, so let's uh, log into this here. With Vivaldi, if you're using the Vivaldi browser, you'll find that there's a thing on there called Webmail, which is a beta thing at the moment, and it gives you sort of Webmail, but it doesn't give you encryption. What you want is the uh, Vivaldi.net Webmail thing. So let's just put this in here, and we'll go to the uh, right place instead. Okay, so now I can sign into this here. So let's sign in, and the one I've set up that actually works is called Spondicious. I tried setting up a second one there just to see if I could do it, but it didn't let me do it because I'd got the phone number to be able to use with it. So you put in a username and uh, log in. Okay, so here we are in the account, and it's all pretty simple. There's sort of three uh, sections across to put your stuff in and whatever else. Uh, I've been testing this here, so there's uh, been a few things I've sent out, for instance. So it's this one I sent from the iPad. I've got to put my key phrase in here, so let me go and get that from uh, one password. So I put a password in there, but it still hasn't... Oh, hang on, there it goes. It takes a little while to do it because it's obviously working across the internet. So the message I sent from my iPad, I've got some um, keys in there, a public key to be able to send it back. The good thing about this here, which is something you can't do with, um, for instance, ProtonMail, is that I can import public keys that are sent to me. That is pretty cool, that is. I like that. So if I click on import there, it loads up and it's imported already, so it's unchanged. So that's, fi that's fine. I've already imported that key. Send in an email. Let's go to compose and I'll send it to myself. Hello world. There you go. You can put images in there as well if you want to. So if I just uh, put them there. So um, switch in, type my cause, text format to be lost. Do you want to switch? Yes, I'll continue with that. Okay, so now that I've got uh, HTML sort of... Uh, Settings there, I can put an image in there if I want to. Drag it and drop it into there, add the image. Click OK. So there's an image in there, and now I can click on Send. So the message was sent as it was supposed to be. If I go to my usual email client now, MailMate. And so here we go, this is the message I've just sent. And as you can see, the message has been successfully decrypted by MailMate. So that we know it was encrypted, and there's the picture that was in there, and everything's just the way it's supposed to be. So what else can we do with this um, application here, with this uh, web application? So if I go into settings, I can go and have a look at the PGB keys I've got. And in PGB keys, I've got uh, the one from ProtonMail, which uh, I'm able to send out from ProtonMail, as I said, but I can't send back. If I get an email in a ProtonMail and it's got a public key uh, embedded into the email or attached to the email, then it won't allow me to bring it in, which is a bit of a pain. I mean, obviously, the thing with uh, ProtonMail is that I can send out stuff to people who are not with ProtonMail, and it gives them the option of putting a password in there. You don't get that option with this one here with uh, Vivaldi.net. And so I've got a few emails in there set up ready to go. And you can do other things as well. Like, uh, for instance, that's the first thing that you need to do when you start up a new account with this here. You have to create a PGP key. So you click on Create. Choose the key size. You can go for uh, 4096 bits if you want to, which is more secure. I just went for the 248. Put a password in there. And again, save the password in one password so that you're not going to be sort of locked out of it at a later stage. And I can also import keys and export keys out of this as well. So if I click on import, and I've got some uh, .asc files, which are the um, public key 
files for PGP, then I can bring keys into this as well. It doesn't have a lot of the facilities that you'll find in the GPG keys uh, key ring. But at the same time, I think sometimes that's a good thing because you haven't got enough things to mess about and and uh, break. And so I think for a lot of people, a new user getting into uh, encrypted emails, I think Vivaldi.net is a good option. So anyway, this is Dave Allen for Good and Geeky showing you Vivaldi webmail and how you can use PGP with it. And as I say, I think it's quite good and I'd recommend it.